If you're wondering why we're standing on the edge of the earth, you're gonna have to stick around to find out. I've had a love affair with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop and I race them both on and off road. I've spent years on the auto show circuit talking about cars, but now it's time to get behind the wheel and find the next adventure. Together, we're setting out to tackle all things that every car enthusiast should do. This is The List. everybody, welcome to The List. I'm Patrick McIntyre. And I'm Jesse Combs. Today we are going to check, photograph your car like a pro off of our list. So we brought with us an enthusiast car, a 1996 BMW M3. Now there's many reasons why you might want to photograph your car. Maybe you want to get it in an article or try to sell it. Or maybe you just want to frame it and hang it on the wall. But either way, you're going to have to start with a detailed vehicle. Now detailing is not only important for photographs, but it's also good for the maintenance of your car. So let's head down to the garage and see how the pros do it. Hi everybody, we are down here in the parking garage with Joe Fernandez from the world famous Superior Shine and he is going to show us what it takes to professionally detail a car. Now Joe, we have our 96 BMW M3 here. It's 16 years old. It's, you know, it looks pretty good, but it has seen better days, it's seen the elements, the paint could look a lot better. We have a photo shoot with it tonight, help us. Well, you said it looks pretty good, and I have to disagree there. As a detailer, if this were a horse, we'd have to shoot it. The first thing we want to do is wash the car. That makes sense. Wash the car, then we can look at the defects, look at the paint condition. Once we determine what's in the paint, how nice we want to get it, then we can decide what we want to do next. Now, with the waterless wash, you just turn the nozzle on the spray and apply it to the panel as you move the sprayer. Some people like to do this. That doesn't work. Right. It needs to be applied. I like to go back and forth. Fold the rag in the fours. You got four panels when it's folded this way, right? Lay it in my hand, I lay the rag onto the panel and just wipe in one direction. There we go. Now, if we're out in the sunlight, you may see a little bit of product still on the paint. Then you come around with a dry rag and the dirt's off of there, so now we can buff it. All right, I showed you guys how to do it. You have your towels, you have your product. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and wash this car and I'll be back in a second to check on you. First, we were skeptical about the effectiveness of a waterless wash, but with the right product, the results are incredible. How'd I do, boss? Good. All right, now the car's washed. You guys did a great job, by the way. Thank we you. have all that debris off the paint. Mm -hmm. Our next step is to determine what condition the paint's in. Sure, what's wrong with it. What's that? wrong with it? There's a few ways we do that. One is visually. We see how it's kind of hazy. We see some scratches in it. We see these large scratches here. These are random, isolated scratches. Another thing we do is uh, to look for scratches is use a Xeon light. Now, Xeon lights are very crisp, bright, white light. And we shine this into the paint. And can you see the point of light and all the scratches around it? Yeah. yeah. And we're going to get rid of all that as well. OK, the first thing we're going to address is that contaminants on there, mm -hmm. you know? Now, most people have heard of detailing clay. Put it into a small patty on your fingers, and you use a lubricant to spray on there, and you slide the clay across the lubricant. Mist it on, set the clay down here, and back and forth motion, back and forth motion. You want to overlap and just come across the hood. Now look at the contaminants I took off of there. Wow. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. Now based just on experience, I know that if we wipe this and we feel it, it's going to feel much better, but it's not going to be contaminant free. Now the other process to remove contaminants is using this polisher. Now how do we use a polisher to remove contaminants? Is by the specialized pad we put on here. Now we spray the lubricant, a little bit here on the paint, and we turn it on, and just overlapping. I see how quickly I did that? Oh wow, yeah. Okay, now I've shown you guys the two methods. Do you want to give it a try? Yeah. Although the clay bar is much more accessible and inexpensive, with the right technique, power tools can save you a lot of time and effort. All right, guys, now that we have all the contaminants off the paint, our next step is we're going to move into the paint correcting. The back of the car is worse than the front of the car, so we're going to use two different processes. The front of the car, we're going to use the dual action polisher mm -hmm. with what's called a microfiber cutting pad. The back here is oxidized to a point where I don't think you could polish it out with a dual action polisher. If you could, it would be very, very difficult and take up a lot of time. So what I'm going to show you is what can be done with a rotary. What, what happens if I, if I do this wrong? I mean, if I don't have the training to use one of these? Well, 
Well, this here has a stronger motor than the other machines. We also have a wool pad on here. So all those things are gonna give you a more aggressive cut to the paint. Allow me to demonstrate. Sure. Lay down a bead right here. Now, am I gonna splatter you guys or not? No, you're you not. Think? You're gonna put it down first. That's right. Same as the other polisher, overlapping. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That's huge difference. Now see that difference? Look yeah. at where I stopped. This mm -hmm. is the oxidized area, and this is the, the polished area. Well, wow. the cleaned area, the corrected area. All right, you guys did a great job on the paint, you know, but obviously what stands out is the trim that's all faded, you know, but not to worry, I have a product for that. We're gonna rub, put a little bit on the sponge here, rub it in, and it'll restore the trim to like new and protect it. Okay. You wanna give that a try? I do. Okay, Jesse's doing the trim, and uh, I would like for you to do the tires and wheels. Okay. Now, most people are too quick to jump to acid base wheel cleaners and this type of thing, and most time you don't even need it. My favorite thing to use is just a dry rag and the very safely wipe off this brake dust. Yep. It doesn't take much. Once we have this all clean, we can dress a tire. We have a, a dedicated product here for tires, hyper dressing by Meguiar's. And the way we put that on is, spray it onto a sponge here, just give it a little bit, and we just wipe it on. Yep. See how that looks? Yeah. You wanna give that a try? Yeah. All right, guys, well, we washed it, we evaluated it, we found defects, we corrected the defects, we polished it, we got the trim, we got the wheels, we got the tires. What do you think? It looks like a completely different car. Yeah, Joe, thank you, and thank you, Superior Shine, for helping us do this. I don't think we could have done it without you. So. Well, you guys are great detailers, and uh, you guys did a wonderful job, and I think you're ready for your photo shoot. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Sure. It was my pleasure. Thanks, Joe. You guys take care. Mm -hmm. All right, so now it is time for us to head out to a hillside location to meet up with our photographer. Drew Phillips is going to help us line up the car, get the right angle, so we can have some beauty shots of this baby. Time to make it a centerfold. <laughs> We've got director of photography Drew Phillips with us. Drew, thank you so much for meeting us, man. Thanks. No, I'm glad that I don't get car sickness because this is one heck of a drive to get up here. Sometimes to get to the really good locations for photo shoots, you have to drive uh, a long way. So Drew, we're, we've got this 16-year-old car with us. Are we going to be able to make this thing look beautiful? You can really make any car look pretty good if you pick the right location and have good lighting and, and know uh, how to compose a good photo. Okay. When you say lighting, what is the perfect lighting for shooting a car? It depends on the photographer. Some people like to use extra lights. Um, I prefer natural lighting. Uh, Drew, you've been uh, shooting for auto blog for years now. What, what do you think can you give us some tips as far as like um, equipment goes for an enthusiast? Uh, realistically, most of the modern DSLR cameras are very, very good. Um, if you're not taking a good photo with, with a, a modern DSLR, it's not really the camera's fault. It's, it's on your end. So switchable lenses, what kind of lenses are best for shooting a car? Um, it helps to have a variety because it depends on what you're shooting. If you're shooting interiors, you're going to need a wide-angle lens. A lot of times if you're shooting motorsports, you want like a, a really long telephoto. So Drew, I've heard the phrase used, chasing the sun. Is that what we're going to be doing today? Yeah, I feel like half the time as a photographer, I'm either waiting for light or rushing to get the light. So uh, we have probably only about a half hour of light left, so we probably need to get started. Let's do it. Yeah, let's all right. get to it. Drew has photographed all kinds of amazing cars, from Mustangs to Corvettes and Challengers to Veyrons. With any luck, he can help us make our old BMW look just as good. So what are we looking at here? Well, this is my Nikon D3. I've got a 7200 millimeter lens on it, which will give you a good telephoto. So I see we got it on a tripod, right? Yes, uh, a tripod just allows you to basically adjust settings freely. So you can adjust the shutter speed down really low without having to worry about a uh, blurry photo. Okay, so let's set it up. All right, so we're just gonna compose the photo, adjust the tripod. Drew, what, what kind of stuff are you looking for with the, with the vehicle? One phrase that's kind of commonly used is fill the frame. It's not necessarily a rule you have to follow, but you don't want to have the car be really small in the frame. Okay, so right now I have it on a manual mm -hmm. setting, um, and here is the shutter speed, so it's at 1 13th of a second. You can see I can change that, okay. 1 25th, 1 30th, 1 40th. And then here's the aperture. Right now it's at 7.1. The lower I go, it makes uh, more lighting come in, but it also has a, a shallower depth of field. Um, but generally I kind of try to stay a little bit higher so the entire car is in focus. Okay. Now that I've kind of shown you how the camera works, I'm going to kind of throw the settings off and then see if you guys can uh, figure out how to do the settings to, to come up with a good photo. Pop quiz? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's do this. All right, so adjust the aperture. There we go. And then I want to adjust the shutter speed. And 
Drew showed us that just a few simple adjustments on your camera can have a pretty big impact on your shot. Looks pretty good. Drew, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, man, these are going to make some great photographs. Well, there you have it. After a full day of prepping the car, finding the location, and getting some camera tips, I think the photos will speak for themselves. We can officially check Photograph Your Car Like a Pro off our list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.